Okay, so we're tagging a calf. The tag, the white one has, is the electronic tag. It also has a, a genotype tissue sample. The other tag then has a, a BVD tissue sample. It's an ongoing scheme at the moment to try and eradicate that out of the herd in Ireland. If your calf comes back that's infected for BVD, it has to be culled. What does cold mean? Uh, it has to be killed to go, for, to go for the slaughter. Okay, okay. to the centre of the year. She knows what's going on now because the other arm is done and she's fine. And then we have the other tissue sample for the BVD. Yes. Okay? Good, good. So we have two of our ring calf heifers are suckling the other heifers that they're with in the shed. A nightmare. Um, it can create mastitis in the cow or heifer that they're sucking. This is an anti-sucking device. It goes into the heifer's nose and we tighten it up and these spikes on the top when she comes up against another cow it'll spike them and they'll kick them away. We haven't had one in my memory. Make sure that's good and tight that it doesn't fall out but not too tight that it gets stuck up and she's still able to uh, still able to suck. So hopefully that will do the trick. We have one of our older milkier crazy type cows here now starting to calve but she's showing all the classic signs of having milk fever. So I'm taking a bit of a gamble and uh, giving her a revival before she calves, which I think she's drinking. I'm going to get calcium boluses into her as well. And then I'll probably have to assist her calving. We've been down here since six o'clock or so, myself and Rosie. The cow from last night, I was having milk fever. Checked her again at two o'clock in the morning. She was kind of lying flat out, hadn't moved from where she, I had left her. So came down, treated her again, got two bottles of calcium into her on the vein <coughs> and under the skin. She's still down this morning, but looking very perky and alert, trying to stand up, struggling to get her back legs under. So in a few hours, we will lift her, we'll try and lift her, get her feet under and fingers crossed, she'll be 100%. Always a concern when they're down, particularly if they're big, heavy cows. Myself and Oscar are heading down to the yard to check on Rosie. She's still down there, she's still feeding him. We all have our own routines feeding calves. I love the training pen because they can't knock each other off. And when they're young, when they're on a group feeder, I find it's highly stressful. I absolutely hated feeding calves at the start and Joe had to be doing that way. So while we were moving cows, she calved. Joe's gone over to make the recovery drink for the cow. Here comes Muscles. Do you give that recovery drink to every cow? No, uh, from three lactations on. How are you lying on the navel? What's it there? Normally squirt when we box a bit low. So. Jersey cross. Pepper. So that cow that just calves, what will happen now? We will dress our house, plus the three other cows that calved this morning. Um, We'll milk them this afternoon to get their colostrum so we can put a storage bag into the fridge uh, for future cabins. Keep them in, get a bit of silage into them and so the room doesn't collapse on us, stomachs don't fall over and then they'll be fine in 24 hours and go out with the others. Yeah. One said yeah. Extreme right, who's right? Your right. Come on, I'm right I was on my extreme right. You're standing blocking the gap. Yeah, block I was I was stood here and you said extreme right. <laughs> Results. Footing. Magnesium chloride flakes on top of the silage. Uh, it's to increase the amount of magnesium mineral going into the cows pre calving I can't remember the feeding rate, so I'm just applying liberally to the top of the silage. Uh, it has no adverse effect in that their dung might get a bit loose. That's all you can't over those months. Is this the first time giving her a tell off? The last week or so. Uh, we started last year because our silage is low, curry is high in uh, 
potassium and that binds up the magnesium and calcium in the cow's blood and can lead to milk fever. So this is increasing the magnesium in the diet. They seem to like it anyway. It's actually, it's not the sweetened version. You get a sweet version and they go mad for it. It's a little bit bitter, but uh, yeah. Show they, me it in your hand. Just like, take it in. Um, we were quite nice in the cabin front. Our cow yesterday from that was down with milk fever, myself and Ellen lifted her and we got her walk. She walked, thankfully, out to the, our little garden beside the cabin shed. And we left her there for the evening this morning. Thankfully, she met me at the gate, tuned the code. How are you, Joe? Get me over here, please. So she's currently walking around the yard now, getting exercise into her legs, looking at the milk. Uh, anyway, she's in fine form this morning, so absolutely delighted with that. Listening to Paul McSweeney on the radio, she's called Marine MC. Great to have her on. Maybe you're out and about on the farm getting the day started like Joe milking cows in Wicklow. This is the cow that was down yesterday with milk fever. As you can see here, this is called sickling or bending of her, her hock on her foot. It generally happens when there's a bit of a nerve damage in the foot with a cow being down. Um, we'll continue to treat that fantastically. She's up, she's in a row in the parlour. She should be 100%, so delighted. There goes Dora now, backpacking all. Thank you for finding them, love. So, while I was washing, you were dead. Your dairy room that you had washed, and one thing happened to fall onto the ground that you didn't bother to get underneath to look for. You're welcome, and I found them. Yeah. So it's Monday morning. I'm just about to feed the calves. We have a, our old fridge freezer. We brought down to the machine room. We need to move some food down here. Yesterday, we decided to work through lunch to get a few jobs done. We were absolutely starving. We were hangry. But there was a few comments made. Um, yeah. Did you walk down the Sure. Okay. Don't mind the headphones, I'm listening to an audiobook romance. So after these lads were in the training pen last night, they literally were only in for a few minutes to show them the teeth. I left this feeder in here with milk in it all evening and night. Took it away this morning. It was fully empty. I saw them on the camera during the night. They'd emptied it early enough in the early hours. I'm gonna do the same with these lads tonight. These are gonna move out of this pen. Now that they're teeth trained. It's so easy. We saw a guy do it on Twitter a couple of years ago, and we've done it for about three seasons now. And it just works out brilliantly. Beautiful spring morning here in West Wicklow. Bit of frost earlier on, and now we have blue skies and sunshine. It's fantastic. These are our maiden heifers. Happy out now. They'll be there for maybe till the end of the week. The plan is then to divide them up on their way. The heifers that are on target are going to come to the milking platform. The lighter ladies that are below target, their target weight, are going to stay here on the outfit. Come over onto this crop here. This is Red Star. It was sown in August. It was really dry and then it was really wet after it was sown. It hasn't performed as a crop at all. It should be anywhere between two and a half and three foot tall, maybe taller sometimes. It's a forage crop. We, the plan was to outwinter the heifers on it, uh, strip graze it with bales of silage. But we decided just to house the heifers and give them silage a meal and try and graze it now. It should hold the heifers for a couple of weeks, hopefully there's uh, six acres in the field. Managed to give myself a fat lip. <laughs> Who's moving the fence? Hit me in the gob. So, bit of bloodshed on the spring morning. Not like it. Very odd. Uh, the joys of living beside the main road. You can see there's a whole lot of empty bottles all dumped in here sometime over the winter. I don't really have words to describe people that do it. So Fiona's here with me this evening. We are putting on the next six calves onto the automatic feeder. We just got them over from their starter pen. Joe is going to get a pipe fixed on the tractor. So he's the first beef calf in, sucking away. When the green light starts to flash, we know to take him off. And then this is the first feed. So we have to add each calf individually to scan them onto the system and let them do a full feed. Fionn's on his midterm, he's off for the week. I was working with my grand uncle today at, the, at his, like, his friend's stables and looking out feeding and stuff like that. 
Do you know how you feel about living on the farm? It's a great life. And do you reckon you're going to farm? Sure, who else is going to take over? Me. Yeah. I want to, obviously. <laughs> We're still early days in Cavern, really. Come over here to the dairy, wash all the calf feeding equipment up. Joe leaves, whatever. Colostrum bags. He has used during the night, feeding two bottles of milk. I wash them out. And then they go into a sterilizing bucket full of um, Milton solution. So there's everything there, ready to go for whenever Joe needs us. I was just tagging three or four calves there. Received a puck. In the backside from very active little Angus bull calf while I was tagging his hen mate and I put the tag together but missed the ear. So now I have a little Jersey Cross bull in there with only one tag. Placement oh. tag ordered uh, ASAP. But uh, such are the joys of farming. Boo boos happen. Happy Valentine's Day. Fionn's heading in there now. We've just moved three calves over from their starter pen and we're going to register them on the automatic feeder. So I'm on my midterm this week. Last week I finished my mock exams. I thought they went pretty well, but now they're done and out of the way. I'm here working on the farm every single day, every morning, feeding calves, making sure everything's fed and everything's run well because, you know, the others, they wouldn't be the best at running stuff. The smaller kids are still all in school until the last two days of the week. Loud cows, calves feeding up there. We're after bringing over this Charlie bull from the bullpen over here to be trained on the automatic calf feeder. First time, so everything's a bit rigid, but... Just have to get them tried on to us so they know how to do it themselves. And then, let them out. So Joe was off farm this morning running errands, so myself and a few thought we'd go ahead, get ahead of the game and start extending the pens for the ever-growing number of calves that we're expecting. By having these young lads around, mad for the work. I'm out and about this morning. Uh, Fionn and Ellen are Ellen and Fionn are feeding calves. I posted away our first BVD and genotype samples, and I am now going to Balator to our local Tierlon factory get our milk analysed and sampled um, for antibiotics, so we can get some milk into the tank and get some out the gate. An exciting time trying to get that done. Sell milk, sell as much as you can. Um, so that's the plan for now, and then it's back home to be out. I saw this idea on Twitter for hanging your sheep hurdles uh, stuff there, Sean. Thanks. Eye hooks. No, that's not going to work. Oh, no, it might work. That works, doesn't it? Do 30 plus cows in the next seven days, 10 days. So we're now currently just setting up the second automatic feeder, getting more pens, more space ready, getting housing ready for our bull calves. Get an hour for Valentine's dinner this evening with my lady love. And uh, it can drive on after that then, be busy as it likes. Be head to the grindstone and we'll raise it from Patrick's day. So, so happy birthday to Joe, he's 45 today. Feel every minute of it. Uh, we had a big day of slurry planned today with the contractor booked. Um, obviously the weather hasn't played ball at all, a lot of rain last night and this morning. I went to our driest field, uh, going out with the dribble bar there. You might be able to see it on the back of the orange tanker. Uh, low emission slurry spreading. So here we have uh, a cow's afterbirth after she calved. She calved this morning at about 11 o'clock. Um, this is the, the placenta, or the cow's cleanings is the old name for it, uh, agricultural name for it. Uh, it comes out after the cow has her calf. The exact same in humans. Um, they generally pass it some quite quickly after birth. Others can take up to 12 hours. Uh, See these fibrous tissues here on the side? That's where it was attached to the wall of her womb. 
So her womb contracts and it puts out her cleanings. Cows generally eat it after they calve. It's quite nutritious, it's full of nutrients, proteins. It was given the life source to the calf. Um, farmers have different opinions on that. Some think it's a choking hazard and generally take it away from the cows. Uh, we don't mind particularly. Um, as in humans, it needs to all come out after birth. If there's any piece left in there, no matter how big or small, within a few days, or in a human's case, within hours, within a cow, within a few days, it'll go rotten and cause a rise in temperature in the cows. She will get very, very sick very, very quickly. So ideally, it all comes out in one piece. Traditionally, um, if it went over 24 hours and it hadn't come out, we would be trying to pull at it and with different methods of trying to get it out. Now the general thinking is, with, uh, through veterinary research, leave it be, give it three to four days, it'll come out in time itself, and if not then you go in and treat the cow, you try and remove what's left, you insert antibiotics into her womb to stop any infection. I went on my first date with Joe, he told me he wanted seven children. They are a good help on the farm this time of the year in particular, even just out and can be under sheet maybe, but it's just washing stuff, carrying buckets, messing around with calves, bedding pens, just help doing all them small jobs that get put on the long finger and you might be chasing at the end of the day. So they are a huge help. It's midterm break today as well, so everyone is on board. It's, it's the best life and I'm so glad that this is where I've ended up wearing my children. When he's not a cranky pants, which he is today because he's had no sleep. Yeah, it's been a busy morning, just an early start. You need to have breakfast now, hopefully at some stage. Slap in the middle of calving now, we have 40 cows calved. We had a quietish day yesterday, but the cows have picked up. Um, we've had six since uh, seven o'clock yesterday evening, so eight o'clock yesterday evening, so it's all go. We had six calves today. Yeah, started at uh, 10 past three this morning, and I'm just in there now from Another cow cabin. Um, I think there's probably going to be one more before 12 o'clock tonight. So We both came home at 7 o'clock and had a nap. We were absolutely wrecked. I had been up all night checking the cabin camera for Joe. So um, we're home now. Bra's off. Shoes off. Time to rest, watch a bit of telly and uh, start again in a few hours. You tired, Joe? Yeah. Too tired to carry a coat? I don't want to dirty it. I don't want to dirty hands. Oh. Swanky Pearson's coat. <laughs> There's no antibiotics in Irish or European milk.